I've worked in the investment banking industry for over 10 years, working at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and HSBC. One of my early influences in life at university was a rapper known by, 50, known by the name 50 Cent or Curtis Jackson. Now, he wrote a great book called 50th Law, which I hope you can learn from throughout this video. One of the key lessons of the book is fear nothing. And when I say fear nothing, it means he dealt with very extreme adversity, right? Early on in his life, not having... Uh, family members to look out for him, dealing with various uh, enemies, you could say, in the crime world, and then dealing with the very uh, cutthroat music industry. But he managed to navigate that and try to deal with those scenarios in a very efficient way, right? In a very kind of ruthless, cutthroat way. And that's something the book covers in quite an effective way. And, and there's a few key points, a few key sections that we can learn from to help you with your career. So the first area is around intense realism. Now, intense realism is quite quite important because it, what it means is being a, being attentive to reality in a very intense way. You're not deluding yourself and distracting yourself with your phone, with uh, latest celebrity gossip, with office politics gossip. You're very intense and real with yourself. And uh, w the way you can apply this to your career is essentially, and I've done this for myself actually, what you do is you have a very intense <laughs> moment where you, maybe you look at your personal finances, look at your future goals and think, how close or far am I from that? Now, several years ago, maybe about five years ago, I did that realistic ass assessment with myself before the inflation got really bad as it has got since 2020, right? Um, before you see more of this social dysfunction between men and women, family formation, buying houses and all these other type of things we're not going to get into right now. I had a very intense, realistic moment with myself thinking, okay, cool, do I wanna buy a house? Do I wanna have kids? What was the, the risks there of the divorce rate, of uh, child support payments, of the risk of losing my house in a divorce, the, the risk of climbing the career ladder and getting canceled? All these type of realistic assessments you have to do, particularly as a man in the West these days, right? Now, intense realism is about looking at that. I looked at my savings, my investments, my potential trajectory in terms of my salary, and I had to make a realistic decision. What do I want to do? Do I want to pursue self-employment? Things like that. And, you know, this career opportunities I'm pursuing, which I won't get into right now, but part of my financial goals are to offer my skills as a career coach, right? And that was part of intense realism, being realistic about what skills I have, how I can help people, how I can have a fulfilling way of making money and um, helping people, developing the freedom lifestyle I'm looking for. And part of that is intense realism, looking at things realistically, not the Kool-Aid, not drinking the corporate Kool-Aid at the company you work for and say, oh, they say, oh, I'm gonna make manager next year. Oh, I'm gonna get promoted in two years. I'm gonna get a salary rise of five, 10, 15K, which won't really make a difference in your life when it comes to inflation rates being high. So intense realism is very important. This section talks about reality being quite harsh, that your days are numbered, you, the, life is short, right? And I know um, we can all get caught up with our day jobs, we can get caught up in various other, say, celebrity gossip, what's the latest thing on social media, but you have to be realistic. What life do you want to live? How can you live your best life, right? Without leaning into that ridiculous meme, you've got to think about these things because no one's looking out for your best interest, not the company you work for. And to be honest, not even family or friends. They don't know what your goals are and what you want to achieve. And you should aim to do that yourself. As it say, it takes constant effort to do this. You're dealing with a very competitive world. People can be treacherous, cutthroat, ruthless. You should accept your circumstances, focus on what is going on around you, deal with people's manipulations, and alter reality for your purposes, essentially, right? Now, this is common themes of what I tell you, because I know sometimes when I make these videos, I can come across, if people don't understand the context, maybe a bit negative. Even though I'm a career coach, uh, you might say, oh, well, you're not being too positive about careers sometimes, not being too positive about the finance industry and working a career there. 
I'm trying to give you the reality that you're not going to get from some cookie cutter career coach who's going to say, oh, this is the high salary you can make. This is how friendly everyone is in the work environment. It's not actually like that. Yes, you can make some good friends. Yes, you can earn a decent salary, but you're dealing with quite a cutthroat environment. You're dealing with very harsh reality, right? You're dealing with a reality where you're like, okay, I'm making a certain amount of money. My cost of living might be high. So am I really making a lot of money long term? Can I invest and save this money to, to retire? early things like that so you need to think this through and this book was very important and influential to me I had read 48 laws of power by Robert Greene when I was at university yeah, I read this book and there's only a handful of books that stood out to me over the course of my life and stood the test of time and this is definitely one of them this is the type of book that I would reread I've been quite busy making these videos and doing other things but this is the type of book that you should read if you're early on in your career or any point in your career you're dealing with a very harsh reality attach yourself to reality not delusions not distractions even though we all need a break we need some level of escapism but you know you have to be attached intensely to reality to overcome you know maybe the reality that the career you picked isn't the best career for you that doesn't pay the best long term that does have career instability and income instability and you need to focus on maybe another career another decision you need to make lowering your living cost if you live in reality when everyone else is deluding themselves and distracting themselves with phone social media politics culture war gender war blah 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 this is what you need to be doing, focusing on your life, your health, your wealth, your freedom, if it interests you, your relationships, things like that. But for me, it's like health, wealth and freedom, right? The job I pick is, is looking at aligning with my goals, not the company's goals, right? And intense realism will help you pay attention to what is in your best interests. Now, this is my favorite part of the book, 50th Law, right? Make everything your own, self-reliance. When you work for others, and this is important for anyone who has a job, I know it seems like a bit random, what does 50 Cent and Robert Greene have to offer you if you're working a, a 9 to 5 job, but just pay attention to this quote. When you work for others, you are at their mercy. They own your work, they own you, your creative spirit is squashed. What keeps you in such a position is a fear of having to sink or swim on your own. Instead, you should have a greater fear of what will happen to you if you remain dependent on others for their power. Your goal in every manoeuvre in life must be ownership, working the corner for yourself. When it is yours to lose, you are more, more motivated, more creative, more alive. The ultimate power in life is to be completely self-reliant, completely yourself. Now, the context here, which they go into in the chapter, is a bit abstract in terms of 50 cent you know, let's just say selling substances himself but being a, a dealer himself versus working for the local uh, mob he chose to be a dealer himself rather than working for the local mob and getting a steady payment from them he wanted to do his own thing make more money have a larger profit margin and he put the risk on dealing with the backlash from the mob essentially the mafia right now in this context for you if you're working a day job what you're really trying to look from this is go oh, you want to make as much money as possible you want as much freedom as possible and you're going to have to take a risk you might have to take a risk to jump in terms of your career from one company to the next you might have to take a risk to start your own business to um maybe go into part-time temporary roles contract work so you can focus on other aspects of your life your family your friends and whatever else you prioritize your health maybe right so maybe make some risky investments to have a big payoff so you can retire early all these type of things you need to really think about what's in your best interest this isn't about being selfish this isn't about being a lazy employee it's about looking out for yourself and maximizing the power you have over your life not over others you're not trying to be a toxic manager you're not trying to uh, manipulate the company you work for and scam them out for some kind of compensation as an employee you're looking for th circumstances that benefit you the most and this is such a um, important quote i actually had it on one of my walls in, in the past i've need i might put it back up actually so it's very important to consider this thing you want to maximize your freedom maximize your power and not get caught up in being a pawn for a company you're working for so that's the most important thing here now, this is another um, quote we'll go through very briefly here, right? So push beyond your limits, self-belief, right? Now, your sense of who you are will determine your actions and where you end, what you end up getting in life. 
You have to have high ambitions. You have to train yourself to achieve your goals. You have to know you're destined for something great. You have to have a strong sense of self-worth. Never let the opinions of others impact you. Have strong confidence and cultivate an air of certainty and boldness. So something I've dealt with in my life and maybe various demographics have, you deal with others who have a crabs in the bucket mentality. They have a very low lifestyle mentality. They don't want to aim for making serious money. They're kind of leeches, parasites, crabs in a bucket. They're trying to hold other people down. They have a very toxic, never progressed, live the same old boring life and they're trying to keep you that. It could be friends, family, fathers, mothers, brothers. I won't go into specifics. But you should think about that in your life. Who is holding you down? Who's got a crabs in a buckets mentality? You limit your interaction with them. If they're a family member, talk to them on a need to know basis. Don't discuss details with your life with them. If you're doing well in your life, they're going to try and talk you down. You're making more money, they're going to try to talk you down. You're taking more care of your health, they're going to try to talk you down. Very toxic people, cut them out of your life. I've made that decision. I actually cut out two people who were technically uh, close contacts a few months, a few weeks ago, last month, right? After many years of dealing with their toxic nonsense, right? You have to have ultimate self-belief. Anyone who's trying to talk you out of a good decision for your finances, for your career, for your health, for your freedom, just stop talking to them. Just say, sorry, I'm quite busy. I don't have time for this. And you just lessen your communication with them. Now, it's up to you how you do this. That could be quite a difficult scenario if they're family members, if you're living with them, if it's a co-worker who you really don't want to deal with, you just have to deal with them to earn, earn your money, uh, earn your salary. So you really think about that. I, I highly encourage you, I highly encourage you to think carefully about what you want to achieve in your life. And you can say you can set a high bar, a realistic bar, whatever works for you. But just think this is the exact life I want to live. This is the exact career I'm trying to build and just go for it. And don't discuss it with people who are negative, who will pull you down. I've dealt with friends and family members like that, as I say, and I just interact with them less. And unfortunately, when you do have this type of environment we see in the West with this glorification of victimhood or equality for the sake of it or valuing weakness over strength, oppression over victory, oppression over conquering things, this type of slave morality, you can look up to what Nietzsche says about slave morality because that's what you have in the West. Uh, you, you're going to have people who are going to talk you down all the time. Just don't interact with them. Try and become the strongest version of yourself, the richest version of yourself, the most of the right version of yourself, right? And that's something I'll cover in another video. But the key takeaway here is have maximum self-belief. What do you have to gain from not having the maximum self-belief and making as much money as you want being the exact position you want in your life. You have nothing to gain by playing yourself down. I don't know what you could possibly gain from that. And 50 Cent is someone who dealt with a lot of those adversities. His mother wasn't around. He's effectively was raised by his grandmother and grandfather. He grew up in a poor environment. He technically, based on you know, some of the things that had happened, he could have ended up you know, no longer alive. Let's just put it that way. He could have dealt with blackballing in the... Um, music industry because he had some disagreement with say jay-z and other major figures who could have held him back in his career he dealt with very questionable business dealings with uh, some of steve stout people like that and then eventually it worked out for him he was with eminem and dr dre and he sold 10 million records bought a 10 million dollar home which is mike tyson's former home made 40 million within the space of a few years of his first few years of his career and he saved it, invested it, he didn't waste it on designer goods. And what did he have? He had the self-reliance, which we covered slightly earlier. He paid attention to intense realism. He knew his dire circumstances and he rapidly improved his scenario. He had strong self-belief. Because if you think about it, if you're growing up in a very poor neighborhood, you're probably, like I say, you're not really going to, your school teachers, everyone around you saying you're not really going to go too far. You might be a school teacher yourself. You might become just a convict in prison, in the revolving door of, of prison. But he made a lot for himself from those quite extreme circumstances. Now, if he can do that, then you can do that. If you're working a job you hate, a nine to five you hate, it's not as bad as having a criminal record like 50 Cent did, right? Or um, just having one real 
outlet, which was music, right, in terms of making a lot of money, you have a lot of skills you could develop, right? If you're working in finance, you may, maybe could go into crypto. If you're working in tech, you could maybe switch to finance to earn a higher salary. You've got so many different options. M many people get stuck in just, okay, cool, well, I'm an analyst, I can become an associate. Well, after associate, I become vice president. Then I become executive director. Then I become director, managing director of the team. Firstly, there's very narrow roles. The more senior you go, very few people are getting those top roles because there's only a few of them available. But apart from that, you can just really jump careers. You don't have to, you know, erratically in an unstable way, jump from one area to the next, but really plan things out thinking, okay, cool. For example, you know, I work in risk management. I've been doing these type of risk management advisory roles. I want to be more into project management. Maybe I can complete a project management qualification. Maybe over the course of two to three years, manage a few projects in my current role, find a project management role. Maybe it's a remote job or hybrid role. I can work from home. Maybe over time I can negotiate into a contract work and work abroad and maybe spend some time in a foreign country where you prefer to live. If you're highly skilled and talented, you can market yourself correctly. You can focus on your self-belief, on intense realism, maybe take a pay cut initially and then once you've made that move have some side income some income from your investments a rental property and then once you've done all of that then you can go ahead and move forward with that high paying um side business and high paying uh remote job and live in whichever country you prefer you know some people want to their ethnic roots go back to nigeria or canada and they want to uh, nigeria or ghana and they want to go live there and be around people they prefer to be around compared to the west and um make a make a good salary so that you should have no limits i remember a conversation i had with some let's say a family or friend and they they i i mentioned things like um working in a slightly different type of career living in a different country spending part of my time in that country part of my time here and they constantly try to talk me out of it and i thought this is a you know close family or friend i won't name the name right and i thought why are they why are they being so combative about it? this is my life it's my choice they don't have to support everything i want but it wasn't like they were not supporting it or supporting it. they were like well this is like your life as it currently is is just what it's going to be forever that's not that's that's your life that's your life. That limiting belief is your limiting belief. It's not my limiting belief, right? If someone, if you're talking to someone and they're like, oh, well, my life is uh, working a nine to five in a government job, having a dead end marriage, a, a broken down home, dysfunctional dynamic with your own children. And that's just the life I'm going to try and push on everyone else. And this is what most people do. They're in miserable marriages. They're pushing it on you. Miserable careers. They're pushing it on you. Miserable overpriced living costs for like low living standards. They're pushing that on you. Don't, don't let other people's limiting beliefs be pushed on you. Whatever you want, you can achieve it. You know, I mean, a lot of people would see me and I'm just trying to set an example for you to help you because I know you're everyone, most people in the West, I would say in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, you're dealing with very, very extreme, extreme, difficult economic and social situations. Right. And they're both combined. I discussed the dysfunctional gender dynamics in the society, family breakdowns and things like that in other videos but extreme economic scenarios where you have to make it you have to make unconventional decisions unconventional career decisions think outside the box you know have a two-bedroom apartment rent out one room to uh, someone else and make some income there and you know get paid in cash or however you want to get paid you pay your high tax if you want to do it however you want to do it. i won't get into that now you can't really play by the standard set of rules that you've been given. You have to really think beyond any limit, any limit. Don't put a limit on yourself. If you put a limit on yourself and think, do what the average person is doing, you're going to get screwed. The average person is getting screwed. That's what I always try to present to you. Look, really try to think it through. You want to make very radical, well thought out, well calculated risks. Take radical, calculated risks risks that is the key takeaway here that's what 50 cent did he said i'm not going to work for the local mafia 
I'm going to do my own thing and deal with the risk if they come and try to attack me, right? And he dealt with that, right? Then he, he went into the music industry. He didn't go in there, oh, I'm going to play the game and suck up to people. No, he went into it, made some controversial songs, critical of Jay-Z and others, created a controversy, created a buzz, sold his own mixtapes, made enough money, got enough buzz to get the attention of certain major record labels, signed up a good deal, got a million dollar record deal, went from a million dollar record deal to 10 million sold, 40 million net worth. Now he's around 101 million net worth and he's producing TV shows because the music industry is not as lucrative as it was before. And it's kind of moved from uh, glorifying men in a sense to kind of this sissified Drake version of, of hip hop that you have now, which is weird. Um, he didn't have any beliefs. So if 50 Cent doesn't have any, even his self-limiting beliefs, right? He didn't have any limiting beliefs. He didn't let the, the, the oh, are you crazy? You think you're going to make millions of dollars? That's crazy. No, he went and made it. And that's the example 50 Cent should set out to you, whether you like his music or not. Same with Wes Watson, which I covered in a, another video, who also went to jail for many years. If these people can make multi-million dollars from, from their personal brand, from unique, radical career decisions, which they made, whether you want to call it career or self-employment, you can do the same, right? And in many ways, you're not dealing with as worse circumstances they are. You don't have a criminal record, typically. You don't have um, violent crime around you. So you should really think about carefully what you want to do. Don't always think about um, what people are telling you to do. Don't let their limits limit your life. And that's particularly important when you are being told and you're being boxed in like, oh, just have lower living standards, expect less, expect less. That's why you should not be placing any limits on yourself. Society is already pushing a million and one limits on you. Don't, you don't have to accept that and you don't have to add on to that by putting limits onto yourself. 50 Cent has made more money than most people working in the finance industry. He's definitely worked, made more money than a lot of the managing directors, apart from the handful of few who have made very smart investments. They might have made $40 million that 50 Cent had in the first few years of his career, or $100 million on the way down the line. Most people haven't, right? So a lot of people might look down on a music artist and say, what can we learn from him? What can we learn from a 50 Cent or a... Um, you know, a, a rapper, people look down on a gangster rapper, but he's made more money than a managing director. He's made more money than the people you probably work for in terms of your direct management. So you can learn more from him than you can from them, right? And bear in mind, when we have these examples of a 50 cent, of a Wes Watson in my other video, these are highly accomplished men. They're really respectable men compared to some of the men you'd see in, in corporate environments who don't really carry them in a respectable way, given the demoralization and emasculation agenda of liberalism and feminism within the workplace. So that's someone really to aspire to be an aspirational figure, someone you can learn from and someone you should really type of take the initiative from what he did. He seized uh, his life into his own hands rather than waiting for a promotion, waiting for someone to look out for him. He built his own reputation, built his own sales and marketing by creating a buzz and controversy around, him, around himself. And there's also sort of little lessons you can take from that, from building your uh, career and your reputation in a good way, of course, not necessarily controversy, but not waiting for the company you're working for to promote you. Go and find another job that's going to pay well. Don't wait around. Don't let people walk all over you. These are the type of lessons you can learn from 50 Cent. In And he was dealing with much more extreme circumstances than simply having some dissatisfaction in his career. So something for you to learn from. Leave a comment below if you have any questions. And there are two recommended videos on your screen right now, a free ebook in the description, and I'll see you next time.